to your production? No, that's the thing. You can't, you know, be pulled back by it. You have to keep on producing your work, you know, and, uh, and that's what I've been doing for years. I mean, I moved back to the, in, in Istanbul in 2001. Mm -hmm. And just the past two years, I've started to show my artwork. But since then, I've just really? always been doing it in my studio. I've had like little solo exhibitions here and there, pop-up shows and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I just recently, the past two years, I've been oh. like in the art scene here. Oh, that's interesting to hear. What about the street art portion of it? Do you think that's going to affect your presence in Turkish art scene? Uh, no, because, I mean, there's right now it's like a trendy thing for like street artists to like to go change. into galleries and yeah. stuff like that. But for me, it's not been, the, hasn't been the process because I've been involved in both mm -hmm. uh, for years. You know, I'm supposedly I'm like one of the first stencil street artists, not graffiti, but stencil artists to, uh, to do this stuff like in, in 2000 starting with like the obey image mm -hmm. shepherd fairies and then i i made it a to did a turkish twist by putting a mustache on him and naming him osman <laughs> and then that's why that's how i got like the whole ball going in regards to street art but you also got some objections to that image was it from turkish artists or yeah it was, was from, it from turkish Obama? artists but they didn't do their homework because uh, i actually talked to shepherd fairy and Oh. I shared the image with him and I was like, oh yeah, I put a Turkish twist on it and he's like, oh, I support you and, That's cool. you know, he sent me a whole bunch of uh, stickers and he, he sent me like the original mold that he did, one of them. And so everyone was like, oh, you just copied his stuff, but actually it was a collaboration with him. And huh. Actually, like I sent him stickers and then I think like 15 years ago, the Dead Kennedys came and my friend saw my Osman sticker on his guitar so <laughs> nice. I reached all yeah. the way over there and came all the way back around full circle yeah that's really that's cool. amazing but it was in the yeah. newspapers and all that stuff and I mean like saying that I, I copied his stuff yeah it's difficult to find that you actually collaborated with him like as an information mm -hmm. it's really difficult to find it online did you do something towers to change that image or you just left it alone uh, you mean the the Osman image? Yeah, no, the the perception as you hmm. copy in his image. Like, did you fight against that idea? That no, they but I, I had certain interviews with newspapers and, and TV interviews, and I just explained it. But if if people, because I've had my website for over twenty years, mm -hmm. and so if they just did a little homework, they would have found out, you know, where the image came from. Or it's very easy to contact me too. So. Yeah. And I, I had a little street art kind of war with a guy called Fly Propaganda. And like whenever I did the Osman image, he would put a, uh, a fly stencil on mine. And then over the years, because he, he thought too that I had stole the image. But then uh, we actually became really good friends after, cause he, after he learned where it came from. Mm -hmm. It ended up good. It, it was like a, a sweet kind of little <laughs> street art war kind of thing. But did you do something against his artwork? Well, then I started to, I did a, a thing called Osmanox. So I, so I did like a a, a fly spray, killer spray. Oh. So whenever I saw his fly, then I would do a, a stencil a of a, a spray. Yeah. Shetox. Huh. <laughs> yeah. How, how active are you right now in these days? In street terms art? Of, yeah, street art. Not as much as I'd like to, because especially after the coup, uh, attempt here because uh, I was very active during those times when I did actually uh, the lady in red stencil mm -hmm. uh, which actually after I did that and it would pick they paint it on in gray and then they I do it again and it was like a five or six layer stencil in light, a big life size which was very tough to do and then uh, they paint gray I do it again paint gray and then I got invited to Denmark uh, the Roskilde Festival mm -hmm. to do a live performance there and do that. And so I did that there. And uh, and then also there was like a protest parade thing. And I did it, the lady in red on a piece of wood. You know, the ones that they, uh, they carry around. And then a guy asked if he could have it to put in his gallery. And I was like, sure. And so he put it in his gallery. And then I went to the States to visit my family. 
And then I found out that they machine gunned the gallery and my piece. In Denmark? In Denmark, yeah. That's in Copenhagen. crazy. And I was in all the newspapers here in Turkey and everyone was trying to reach me and I was in the States and I had no idea. Yeah. And they didn't use my street name, which is also one. They used Ari Alpert. And yes, so it was all in the newspapers and you know like how the, the government is towards that kind of stuff. And so it was very sketchy and you know, and it didn't even write anything. It was just an image of a woman with a, a red dress and they machine gunned it. And it was all in the newspapers here and it was a big deal. And so, you know, I pulled myself back a little bit from that, but it's never really been a, a thing for me to, of being scared to do street art. It's just that it's also like I'm a foreigner here mm -hmm. and during the coup attempt, they, you know, they deported all the, the foreign newspapers and uh, reporters. Mm -hmm. And so if I ever get caught, they would deport me. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of, you know, pull, pull myself back a little bit, but I still do it once in a while whenever I want to. But it depends on my focus, whatever I'm in the mood for. Sometimes I'm in a printmaking mood, sometimes I'm in a street art mood. Yeah. It changes. Is whatever. that where, like, uh, like the stuff that did it when you did it? Like yeah. The pay stuff. Is that yeah. where they kind of join them? Like where you have it, a lot of stuff you were doing before with stencils. Yeah. Whereas the stuff you did there, it was, yeah. it was paste stuff and mixed yeah. with paint. So is this something new? Or? Uh, yeah, well, I've done we paste a lot too in the past, but I've never done a mural. I've always wanted mm -hmm. to do a mural. And actually, I got, before David, I got invited to Ibiza, Spain. Yeah. It was like a Bossa collective project where they were just trying to like, call all sorts of street artists from all around the world to change the neighborhood and like to pull it away from like this, you know, party island or thing and try to make it a more artsy kind of thing. So I got invited to there and I did my first mural there, actually. That was the first one. Yeah, my like, very like, first mural. Yeah, okay. I've done like small we weedies, but I've never done a mural. It's always been a, a goal of mine. And it was tough because I was uh, I did it all by myself. I actually need two or three people to do it. Mm -hmm. But I did that, and but that's correlated with uh, a concept that I'm preparing for my solo show, which is me, and, uh, and in the process I'm, of uh, printmaking and mixed media solo show that I'm preparing. Uh, and so that kind of like matched up with what I'm when I got in, uh, invited to, to Spain and the concept of just being like you know tourists and just meet and just like the industry of the party industry so it like matched perfectly I did a, a man putting his foot in a meat grinder mm -hmm. and then when I got invited to Divid I carried on the, the meat uh, concept there too Right, so this meat, this meat concept though, is this also what you were talking about with using like the meat paper? Yeah, yeah, you know, so it's been it's like a thing in, in the works for like 17, six, 17 18 yeah. years and huh. and actually just this morning because I've always tried to find how am I like going to link it conceptually, you know, uh, you know, when I show my solo show, like how can I link it up at first like I was talking about like men being like used also as a sexual object. Like first I did a woman on the meat people, but that's so classical. And then I, I thought of like men being also in used as sex objects. But then now, actually this morning, uh, I was thinking of relating it to taboos pretty much, and like using like sexual objects, mm -hmm. like even a penis or a vagina or breast, are just like so taboo even in this country when it's like, it's actually just a regular organ. Yeah. It's just meat. And I just actually have a, I'm DJing tonight and there's a, I did a flyer with like this penis with a lock on it. It's called cock block mm -hmm. uh, concept tonight. It's like yes, a fetish yes, party. Yeah. And yeah. everyone, I didn't get any likes or anything. I'm not after likes sort of thing, but everyone was just like so scared just to like it because it showed up in their feet. Yeah, because that and it's just, and it was actually a piece of artwork. You know, the guy did like a piece of metal with a lock on it and everyone's just so scared. It's like sexuality is such a taboo, you know, especially in Turkey. And so I'm kind of thinking of linking that concept to taboos and me. That's both fun and both. Yeah. So like it would be more of a wide range concept, whether just to uh, narrow it down just to sexual sexuality. So now it's more open for me to play around. Mm -hmm.